Everybody, remember, always check out the bottoms. An antique chair or a dreadful, horrible reproduction? How do you tell the difference? Well, using some trade secrets from the antiques business, I'm going to show you how you can tell whether this chair or one that you own at home or are about to buy is indeed a real antique or a dreadful reproduction. Well, first of all, I'm going to tell you that this is indeed an antique chair. I know that, so now I'm going to show you how you know it too. So look, first of all, we'll talk about colour and patination, but look at the construction. The great thing with an antique chair like this, made in the late 19th century, so a good 120 something years old, is that they were made, yes, using some machinery, but you will tell and see telltale signs of hand construction. In other words, great quality and craftsmanship. So let's start at the top of the chair, the pediment there. That's what you call the pediment. Look closely at the detailing in a chair. So take, for example, the two sections of carving, left and right. You would ordinarily completely ignore these things, but if you get your eye in and scrutinise them, you will tell that these two sections, even though they're meant to be matching, flanking, are completely different. Count the digits, yes, there's five or six, in fact, digits there, but look closely and you can tell that each side is carved by hand, not a machine. They're not identical and then just simply reverse. They are carved by hand, which is wonderful. The spindles themselves, take a close look at them. You may well find slight variations. If you don't see variations, look for little nibbles of wear and tear. Bits of damage. These are the things that make an antique an antique. Now look at the panel. This lovely floral organic panel. Look closely at the detailing and you will feel it as you run your fingers over the carving. You will feel the lovely variations. It makes me slava. It's so gorgeous. And look at the chip carving there. It is quite obviously hand done. Feel it, it's just so wonderful. Now, let's just see if this panel is nice and tight fitted into the chair. Can you hear that? It's not, it's slightly loose. This is not a fault. This is a design within the chair from you to allow that panel to move, to shrink, to expand, with generations of use, with seasons, with roaring fires when it was made, central heating today. So there's enough gap there in that panel, in the recess, for it to slightly move, which is really rather lovely because if it was too tightly fitted, it would have split by now. And talking about splits, here is a split that should not worry you one bit the split right across the seat there. This is a sign of age. When it was first put together, the split, of course, wasn't there. But over the last 120 years, the wood has moved. So you've got to accept these things. These are little signs, indicators, that something has lived a life, many lifetimes. So that's lovely. Gorgeous split. It's been repaired. It's been filled. That's fine. Turned legs, really very good. Again, look at the legs closely. See if you can see little variations in the ring turns there. Are they totally individual legs? You will find that they are. But as ever, everybody, remember, always check out the bottoms. We love bottoms. Here is a great bottom. The bottom of any antique, like the back of any antique painting, can tell you so much more. Feast your eyes. Look at the way this thing is put together. Look at the blocks that are holding the seat to the frame. Look at the blocks individually and then collectively. Are they all identical? In other words, machine made, mass made, or do they look like they've been hand cut and then glued into position? Well, in this case, 
they are indeed hand cut and glued into position, not a reproduction. Then of course look for wear, best places always on the base, tips of the feet or the legs, scrapes, evidence of damp, marks, these two little holes there indicate that when this chair was new it had fitted tiny little casters. We've lost the casters at some point, who cares? But there's the evidence of the original casters. Now we're at colour and patination, all important. Look for variations. So the back of the chair is distinctly darker than the front of the chair. Because of course the back has been sat against walls most of its life, so it hasn't been over polished, over cleaned, white with damp cloths or been subjected to sunlight. So paler at the front, that lovely honey oak glow, much darker on the back. And this would have been its original colour when new. And what you want to see is that variation in colour. It doesn't want to look completely uniform. And here's something that I didn't even spot earlier on, and a great telltale. We talked about that panel, decorative panel there. Now look at the back of the panel. And if you can just see, the panel has been chamfered, shaped, so it fits neatly into that recess, allowing it, if you remember, to move about. But look at the chamfering. You can tell that has been shaped and chamfered by hand, by a craftsman, 120 plus years ago. All of these little signs and indicators make this chair perfect and we celebrate its little imperfections.